Welcome to another 90 second website builder video tutorial. My name is Greg Hughes and in this video I want to talk to you about using text. Probably the most important and most common tool that you'll use when you design a website with 90 second website builder is the text tool. Now there's a couple of ways to grab the text tool. Obviously you can go to the toolbox and grab it this way or you can go up to the insert menu and use the text tool here and get it. Um, what I want to point out, first of all, don't confuse the text tool with another similar tool called the text area tool down here. The text area tool is part of the form tools and it's a very specific kind of text tool. We're going to be talking about the standard text tool in this video and show you how to work with just that. So let's grab some text by using the text tool like this. We're just going to draw a box on the canvas. And when we do and let go, it gives us some starting text. Also some instructions on how to edit text at the same time. Now there are three stages of modes for the text object. Right now we have one text object here and it is selected so that we can do things with it, like move it around. Because in this state, it is just that an object that can be dragged and dropped into different places. Now, if it's deselected, that's another mode. It's just not something we're not working with. So notice the difference between a selected text object and a deselected text object. Selected has the little handlebars around it. But there's a third stage for a text object that's unique to text when compared to other objects that you'll be working with. And that is the edit mode. To enter the edit mode of the text object, you double click on it. And now we can actually edit the text. So to edit text, we're going to drag our mouse over this and we can either copy and paste or we can literally type text. And you can do all the things with this text that you would normally do with text, such as change its font, style, size, color, and all those good things. What I want to point out to you is you'll notice that the top of my screen, the menus changed as the mode changed when I was working with this text object. So for example, let's get back out to where the text is no longer selected. You'll notice that my menu has changed. And when I select the text, the software knows that I'm working with a text object and presents me with the text tools menu so that I can format it or review it and reach these tools. Editing the text expands that literally to the format section of the text tools. This is what I'm going to be doing in editing text. I'm going to be working with these tools. The basic features are things you'll probably recognize that you can do with text from cut, copy, and paste to changing the font style and size like we mentioned here. Also, we can justify either right, left, center, full justification, and set paragraphs, etc. These are all pretty basic text editing modes that you would imagine. You can also add special symbols with the text tools, and that is a list of funny characters like copyright signs and registered trademarks and those sort of things very easily by using this particular tool. You can also do a find and replace, which is really handy when you're working with a lot of text. If there's a word you want to change uh, in a paragraph or several paragraphs, you could use the find replace mode to do that. The lorem ipsum is just a way of creating some sort of dummy text. Sometimes when you're doing a layout in your website, you want to just have some text to fill the space and then you will edit it down later. I use this a lot when I'm doing layout and I want to kind of see what the text is going to look, that, look like without actually writing the text. I'll show you what I mean. Since I've selected this text, I'm going to replace it with some lorem ipsum. And I'll just say I want one paragraph of that. And you'll see what it did is it gave me some dummy text to work with, which is kind of nice when you're doing some layout and uh, want to see how the page is going to fill. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how you create a text object and how you edit it. Now, let me say a couple of things about fonts before we move on. As you probably know, you can double click on here and select text and just format that particular word or letter or sentence or whatever you want by going up here to the formatting tools. Now, when you first click on this, you may be surprised to see that not all of your great fonts that are on your Windows system are showing up. A lot of people say, hey, where are all my fonts? Well, 90 Second Website Builder, of course, picks up the fonts that you have in your system, just like with any Windows software. And so your list of fonts may look slightly different than mine. But what you'll notice is the only fonts that are showing are the ones in your system that are considered web safe or web friendly fonts. Now, when you're designing websites, it's a good idea to use web safe fonts as much as possible because these are the fonts that are universal to all other systems and browsers. So if you put Arial on your website, almost every computer in the world has access to Arial and so the font's going to show just fine. And that's true for most of these as well. See, these are all web safe fonts. 
if you were to use some crazy font that your end user doesn't have, it won't look right on the website when they go to it with their computer. And that's why WebSafe fonts exist. Now, there is a way around this. If you want to use other kinds of fonts, it's possible to do that. And there's a system called the Google Font System, which 90 Second Website Builder will allow you to do. But it's a little more advanced, and we'll save that for a different video. But for the most of us, we're going to normally use web safe fonts probably 95% of the time. So don't be surprised if you see a shorter list than you're used to. If you really want to see the rest of your fonts, you could click on this and see those. But I don't do that because I like my website's text to be universal. Okay, so now that you know the basics of working with text, let me give you some examples of how I've used the text tool in designing my own websites. So as I go to the index page of, in fact, the 90 Second Website Builder website, you can see that I've got a lot of text, as you probably will on your site. Um, here's a piece of text that I chose to be white because it's on a blue background. And you can do that. You can change the color and the size and the font. In, in, in every way that you can imagine. If I double click on it, you can see that I'm using Arial 18. I've bolded this font. And of course, as you can see, I've made it be white. Here I have another text object. Here there are more text objects. Now you may also notice that as we scroll down here, I have multiple text objects and I separate my text objects as much as possible. In other words, I make this text object different than this one. While they could be in the same object, while they could be part of the same paragraph, if you will, I find that most browsers can view the text better if your text is broken up into smaller chunks. So rather than make this be one text object, which I could have done, I've separated these because browsers seem to parse the text much better if it's in smaller chunks. So whenever possible, break your text up into different text objects. You don't always have to, but in most cases. So for example, this is one text object, and so is this. Here I've kept the headline or my bolded text and then my regular text, this is actually all one object. So that is an option to do that. Let's look at some more examples down here. Here I have a text object. Again, I've changed it white. And here, these are white because there's a blue background. Here's a larger piece of text. As you can see, there's a lot of ways to format the text within the object. Now, what I'd like to show you is a little trick that you can do with the text. Down here, I've taken a piece of text and put it on top of a graphic that looks like a post-it note. This text you'll notice is a little bit skewed, and the reason for that is because what I did was I took this text object and I right-clicked on it and went to rotate. Here, I adjusted the angle of this text so it would fit a little bit better inside this post-it note because that's just one of the things you can do. I thought it looked a little bit more realistic to have it kind of at an angle so that it looks like it's part of that note. So there's a lot of tricky things you can do with the text object. Now, one of the things you can do with text objects that is unique is when you select the text object like I'm doing right here, you can also go to its properties because the text object itself has properties. Here's what I mean. So I've selected this one. I'm going to go up here to the properties. I could also right click and go down here to object properties if I want to. But I'm going to click on this one, properties, and bring up the text object property. So this is the properties of this specific text object. And there's several things that I can do with this text. Some of this becomes advanced and so I won't go into all of it, but it gives you a good idea of all of the features that you have um, for working with text and doing just about anything you could imagine. So for example, if I wanted to publish this text as an image, I could do that. You want to be careful doing that because when you publish your text as an image, Google no longer sees that as text content. So if you had text that had particularly important keywords in it, you'd want to be careful about doing that. The advantage of publishing text as an image is by doing that, this text can be any font that you want because it's about to become an image and so it won't rely on the local computer's font system like we were just talking about. So that's one of the reasons you might want to do that. You'll want to use that sparingly though, but do know that it is available to you. Here's some more SEO tips. You can include text in your alt attribute. And for those of you that understand search op optimization, you'll know what that means. If you turn your text into an image, you can have an alt tag. In other words, a description of what this object is for search engine optimization reasons. Some of these other settings are for advanced users and we won't go into that in this video. So let me show you some of the other basics. And that is the style tab. The style tab allows me to adjust the style 
of not the text inside the text object, but rather the object itself. Now what does that mean? That means the object itself, this text object, can actually have attributes like backgrounds and borders and things like that. So let's try a little bit of that. I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see that we're working with this text object right here. And I'm going to change the background mode from the default, which is transparent, which is mostly what you'll use, to let's say a solid color. If I choose a solid color, we'll choose something that will show, like blue, I can actually have a background for my text object. Let's go back to the object properties here. I'm right clicking, go to Style tab. I could also put a border around that if I wanted to. So let's just say a dotted border, the color of black, with a width of three pixels and maybe a little bit of a radius. I now have a text object with a border and a background. So you can see the possibilities are endless, and we won't go into all of them here because that would take forever. But it does give you an idea of some of the things that you can do with a text object. Further, there are some other special effects. For example, you can have a shadow behind the box of your text. You can make it blurry. Let's make it black. Offset it by a few pixels. And it gives us a bit of a shadow right there makes it kind of pop off the screen. Again, we'll go back to the object properties and adjust these as we need to. The text object is also available to be used in the CSS3 animation features of 90 Second Website Builder. And of course, there's also padding options. Now this is really important because you'll see that if you really did want to put some color behind a text object, maybe even a border, it's pretty tight against the edges. So this allows you to change that. So for example, if we make the 10 pixels around on all edges, will create a better effect. Let's say OK. And now we've got a little better looking text object. That gives you a better idea of how you can make your text and your text objects look better on your website. But let me show you an example of one of the greatest features of the 90 Second Website Builder text object. And that is its ability to stretch and drag into place. I can show you that better if I take you to my features page. On this page that I'm working on for the 90 Second Website Builder version 10 website, I've got a lot of special layers here with different new features. And of course I use text to describe those features. But what I've done is I've put a text object like this one in very specific places. And I like it to sort of match up next to the images that it's at. So all of these are different images. There's an arrow image, here's another shot of the mobile website, and some more images up here. By putting my text right here, I can at literally use this stretching and shrinking handlebar to make the text line up the way I want it to line up in this particular area. Now this is a, a feature that I use quite often. And you'll see again down here where I wanted the text, let me move this here, where I wanted the text to be longer and fit underneath these images, I was able to do that. I could have had the text be like this. And you'll notice that it accommodates me as I stretch it and shrink it. But I wanted the text to appear under all three images, so I stretched it out this way so that it sort of lined up with the images that it's talking about. That is, again, one of the greatest features. Here's another good example. Here I have an area of text that I need in a very narrow area because I wanted to show this image and this image and still have this text object down here. Here's another image. And that just left me a little bit of area for text. And so what I did was I shrunk it down this way. By just stretching it and shrinking it, I can get it to show just the way I want it to and squeeze it into that area. And of course, the text will move around accordingly. Again, I'm doing that in multiple ways on this website. There's also a new feature in version 10 for text. You're able to wrap text. That's a different tool and we'll cover that in a different video. But it's one of the new really handy features of working with text in 90 Second Website Builder. So hopefully this video gives you a good overview of some of the things you can do with the text tool while you're building websites with 90 Second Website Builder.